like to call the Board of Finance meeting to order of uh, Tuesday, November 18th at 6.05. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say the Pledge of Allegiance. You can all rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, on the agenda is public audience. So if anyone would like to speak, Mrs. Coe, will you please, your name, address? I would like to announce that I am thinking of running for first selectman in 2015 on the platform of town manager. It appears that selectman Lisa Heaven will be running for first selectman and is vehemently opposed to having professional management with the town manager for Simsbury. If I run, my campaign will accept no donations from the public. It is my belief that money gives the perception of corruption, so the entire campaign will be promoted on the social media. I will not have to make a decision to run until January 2015. As a taxpayer, I'm concerned about the financial implications of the town's policy on allocation of funds and priorities set. The town should, one, reduce the mill rate to be able to compete for residents and business. Two, preserve the town assets with a financial plan for preservation and maintenance. Three, provide a plan for the sale of town assets with revenues and expenditures. Four, plan for a reduction of financial aid from the state as they wrestle with the state shortfalls of a billion dollars over three years. Five, policy for allocation of town resources for the performing arts. Six, provide a long-term plan for the golf course. Seven, review the need for future use of memorial pool. Seven, eight, a long-term plan on legacy costs for insurance and salaries. Nine, policy for use of the general fund to increase budgets without public approval. Ten, spend and save should require a written plan for use and monitored for abuse. Eleven, plan for senior center in Eno Hall with SCTV relocated to another building. Twelve, all projects should require long-term costs. Thirteen, strict adherence to policies. Why does this board allow non-appropriate expenditures to be used on a regular basis? This board asks for a cash audit for the town and Board of Education. Where is the written policy and implementation on the recommendations of the audit? What will the Board of Finance recommend for budget increases or decreases for fiscal year 2015? Since there are fewer students enrolled in the schools, what is the plan for reduction of schools? If there is consideration, what are the plans for the buildings? From 2011 to November 13, 2014, there were 198 foreclosure actions registered in town. Is there a policy for distribution of food and services for the needy? What are the additional costs related to families in need? Is there a comprehensive plan for projected town revenues and expenditures in future years? And what is the Board of Education plan if revenues are reduced from the state? And all of my comments will be put on Simsbury.com, Simsbury.com uh, uh, topics, and also on Simsbury Patch. Thank you for listening. Mrs. Coe, appreciate your comments. Uh, and we all appreciate On the budget and, and items of expenditure, but in the future, please, uh, as far as politics and in your intent to run, that I don't think that's appropriate for... Uh, public audience, so you okay. can do that at your own cost. Well, I finished talking Thank about you. it until January. Someone, anyone else like to speak? Yes, I'd like to speak, if I may, with your permission. Yep. State your name and address, please. Robert Kalishman, Simsbury. Uh, <sighs> I know it's not germane, but I'd like to make a comment with your permission, and that's I've witnessed the dirtiest, most smuttest, election in the recent election. I've never seen anything like it or heard anything like it in my experience. And I've been associated politically for a long, long time, and I come from a political family. I never saw this before. Thank you for that, mate. let me make that remark. Uh, the first thing I like to go into is that uh, I get the feeling that the federal state and local governments you're lying to us and the reason I say that is that during the recent election and it affects Simsbury 
is that the administration indicated that there was no deficit, that the state was financially in good shape, and a day after the election, we come in, it's an $87 million deficit. Now it's an $80 million, $89 million deficit. And I understand from what I read, if I can believe it, is that uh, he's going to start cutting the budget. And where are we going? We're getting a lot of promises and state grants. We're going to get money from the state and state grants. And on the other side of the ledger, the administration is signaling us that they're not going to be sending this money. I noticed on my uh, cell phone that Ms. Glassman, our first select woman, is saying that there's a lot of money econom in economic development, and that's she, and that's on patch. And then I notice in today's this morning's paper that Governor Malloy is going to work on the budget with a pencil. That tells me that he's going to start cutting all these programs. And then we go to the local side of the election, and this board that I like to address the fact is, we've put together last year's budget, or this year's budget, we put it together you haven't gone to, you came out with a budget, but now you're going into reserves to pay off various projects. That's wrong. That's what you weren't, you weren't elected to do that. You were elected to get a budget, to oversight the budget, but you're not doing that. What you're doing, and it says time and time and time again, the signal comes from the chairman. Well, we can do that because we have 300 thousand dollars here in this fund and we have so much money in the other funds and you're bleeding these funds to pay for the present budget and the other thing that I'd like to mention is this reserve fund that you have that you put in money each and every year if you have money left over to put into a reserve fund then you're overtaxing the people plain as simple as all that Economic development, I hear we're building parking lots and, and, and all this down, down on uh, Hot Meadow Street at the taxpayer's expense with the taxpayer's dime. It's wrong. Then we have the, the uh, oversight on the Board of Finance. You're elected to have oversight. You're elected to tell the Board of selectmen they're not doing their job and every time you come up this Ethel Walker thing it's a joke we're spending money and then uh, the last I heard we gave Top Meadow I don't know how, mu how many millions and now we just gave them $12,000 of our tax money to cut down some grass where I guess the uh, the Turks, the Turkeys roam, and that should be economic uh, development, the state of Connecticut. But Rich Sawitzki decided it needed to be cut down. He spent twelve thousand dollars of my tax money to award Tup Metal to cut it down. Where's the oversight? Where's the oversight? You're giving Rich Sawitzki, who shouldn't even be back, but we're giving him $25,000 extra to come back for two months, and now he's just spent $12,000 for uh, cutting the roads. And, and last but not least, we have a situation. Ask anybody in this room. Ask my wife. You have roads that are not lit. That lighting system that's on Hot Meadow Street or wherever you have, that's a system that's 25 years old, and that was instituted by the Republican Party to save on electricity and lights at the time. And the light, these lights aren't, aren't meant for a town. The next thing you have, poor roads. 
What you and you're holding your head, Miss. You're holding your head, Mr. Mason. You should hold your head. I'm trying to figure the out what you're talking about. I'm talking about the conditions okay. of the of the roads, the lighting. I'm talking about the conditions of the potholes. I'm talking about conditions of the uh, of the overlay, the the thickness of the tar and the that's being put on the road. You cut back on nickels and dimes, and it's affecting the commuters. I, I drive the roads every day. I'm certain you do too. Mr. And then, uh, can you, can you and I'm going to conclude right now. I got there's much more, but I'll conclude. And here we have a town that's overtaxed. And what do we have? We don't even have sidewalks in this town. You have one thing. Your showcase. What is it? In front of town hall. Is that it? Where is all the money that we're being taxed? We don't have sidewalks. And there's a good example. Ask Miss Hefner. Why did she come in and put that big sidewalk on West Street so the students would have a place to walk? So I know what I'm talking about, and you should hold your head. It's a shame. Take it any way you want. Point of information. No, I just want to say that the, no, the, no, the, no, heavy, the, the uh, cutting of the grass was 1,200, not 12,000. I think it's important that at least we get the numbers right. Would anyone else like to speak at public audience? Hearing none, uh, we're going to close public audience. Uh, a minutes. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the October 21st Summer. minutes? Yeah. Second, any adjustments? Yes. Yes. I noticed one thing, right, um, Linda? That was well, Barbara. Well, you can go first if you like. Well, there, there was one, it relates to what you said, so I assume you picked it up. It's, it's twice, it's in there. Yeah, it shouldn't be this <laughs> under Pledge of Allegiance. It should just do the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. The thing on the minutes is later in the thing, so that, that paragraph can just be crossed off. So the paragraph under one, everyone stood for the Pledge of Allegiance, then everything should be eliminated. <laughs> Okay. And then paragraph five also has the same kind of error. Um, it's it's in the middle of discussion on the um, from the uh, health care representative that was in, and right in the middle of that it talks about Simsbury Bank. So that sentence that says Mr. Mason recused himself from this discussion as a director of Simsbury Bank, he that was down and should be down under presentation from Simsbury Bank. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you with us on that, Joe? Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, Leslie's not here. Uh, anything else? I, I have didn't have anything else. Linda? Um, yes. Uh, these are just little typo kinds of things. On page 7, I mean, uh, under number 7, appropriation for land purchase, board members voiced their concerns. Should be plural. And then in in that, in the next three... Do you have that, Joe? Okay. I can give it to you, Joe. In the next three places where it says somebody made a motion, it says Ms. Pettigene seconded the motion and was passed. Well, actually, Ms. Pettigene was not passed. The motion was passed. So <laughs> at least we hope you didn't pass. It should say which was passed <laughs> instead of and was. Or, or it was passed. A period in it, yeah. yeah, either one. So that was in... In, uh, in 7, 8, and 10. 7, 8, and 10. Was it okay before? It was, yeah, because she did it in a different format. She said the motion was second and was passed. So in that case, the grammar is correct. Sorry, I'm a stickler for those things. Gotcha. Yep. 7, 8, and 10. So 3 were okay. Uh... Or else we had a motion, we're okay. okay. Anything else? Please? Not on that one. Okay. Anyone else? No. We got it all. Okay, all those in favor of the minutes as corrected? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes pass. Okay, can I have a motion for the minutes of November 5th? So moved. A second. 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 All right. Corrections to these. Anyone? I've got a few. Well, the first one's a question under number two. Um, the paragraph under the dot points 
I, I don't really know what that last sentence on the first page is supposed to mean. She referenced the special revenue fund that has failed to provide reasonable budgeting by promising to close the shortfall. That's kind of a confusing sentence. Yeah. Or oh, maybe the promising goes with the she, not with the special revenue fund. But at any rate, that needs to be reworked. That's the first page, the bottom there, the last sentence. But yeah, it couldn't be she because we're talking about Mrs. Coe and she can't close the shortfall all by herself here. So <laughs> unless she wants to make a really big donation. Well, she has to write a big check. <laughs> Well, the subject of that's a special revenue fund right, right. to provide. But I don't know how a fund provides budgeting. Right, or promises to close a shortfall. So mm -hmm. the reference that I think she was making was to uh, Century Farms. Right? What's that? Yes. When you said yeah. that she referenced a special revenue fund that has failed to provide reasonable budgeting by promising to close the shortfall. Yeah. So I think it, okay. Well, I don't. So if we reference Simsbury Farm, I think Simsbury Sims, Farms. Simsbury Farms was not reasonably budgeted. I mean, is that what we're trying to that say? That was probably the concept and, of what you and you're, failed to close the shortfall. Yeah. Okay. That that was probably your sense. comments. Her words. Pardon? Her words. Uh, it's not in quotes, so I don't think it's her words. Uh, she, Leslie usually summarizes. Um, then the comments of Barbara O'Connor on the next page. Mm -hmm. And Joe, I'll give you this so you don't have to Barbara. try to, um, uh, Barbara O'Connor, who's from the Simsbury Tourism Committee, stated that she would like to, I would change it to read as follows, that she would like to present the following resolution approved by them on September 15th and then put the colons and give the, the resolution. Um, the tourism committee supports the town, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'll just give that to Joe. Sure. Okay. And uh, under Deej McCade's comments, just uh, the first sentence needs a period after Biddy Hudson's home and then capital or uh, start the new sentence, she believes. It's also not McCade, it's McCade. It should be, it should be D E E G. Deej. And yeah. as you say, it's C it, Yeah, it's all M C C A Y. It's M A C K A Y. There's no E at the end of each, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. okay. Oh, anything um, else? Well, yeah, one more. Um, under. Yep, my last one. Num under three, the purchase of the property. The second paragraph. Um, Mr. Cook stated that the town has looked at the house and then I would change it to say and plans to secure it safely because he hasn't already secured it um, if and when the town purchases it. Okay. So I'll give these to Joe. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. I have a couple. Um, my thinking was it was very detailed on all the comments from the public audience, but mm. our discussions very, very minimal. I noticed that too. And there were a couple of things that I wanted to make sure got in that were discussed, I think, by the group and reflected it. I, I don't have the tape to listen to, so I don't want to, like, put words in anybody's mouth because I'm not doing it from a tape, but I want to make sure that at least two points that were made are on here. Um, actually, there's three things. First, um, I asked, specifically asked for clarification on the long-term plan that the 25000 would include hazardous material removal and complete demolition and restoration of the site. And I was told it was, that that wasn't for a bid. And it still reads that it's for a bid. So can we just change that? It's obtain. I don't even know if it's obtain. It's for the removal and demolition of the property, 25000 What page on what paragraph? That's page four A4. on the long-term plan yep. section. Okay. Just to make it clear that that 25000 covers complete demolition. Okay. And then the two comments that were, I thought, an in, in, integral part of my making a decision and voting the way I did was that um, when Mr. Cook talked about holding on to the building, and it says for short term, he went on to indicate that the decision should be forthcoming within a year. And I think that's important to be in here, that that was his representation at that meeting. And then... Um, you can help me with this one, um, Linda. Yeah, something like Mrs. Schofield also noted that the town improvements must be capped at 
uh, a certain percentage, and you you cited something to say that oh. we couldn't spend more FEMA rules. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that ought to be in here to say that the FEMA rules are capping what the town would spend. So that was part of our decision was that it, it wasn't an unknown completely. There right. was a cap on the amount. Right. And I think you even told us what the amount was at the meeting. Actually, and I it was Jeff it. Shea who responded. It was me asking the question. Right. He, he responded yeah. that it would be 75000 Okay, so the town spending on that site would be capped at 75000 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know I made lengthy comments that day, too, and nothing, that's nothing okay. I said that's got in for here. Re re that's for if you were to... Um, do something else on the for for refurbishing the house for remodeling the house. Definitely. Yeah, it's not to limit the amount that can be spent on the piece, not on the land, right. but on that on, on, on the, the house because the conversation was around: do we keep the house or get rid of it? Right. It can't be more than fifty percent or right. a certain percentage yep. of the worth. Of the Based on what it's worth, yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. that and was if we're buying it for one fifty, right. then mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. right. So we just ought to throw that in there so it's clear that was all part of the discussion. And I, did you have any other comments that you made that you thought should be in here? You know, I didn't Why I don't go back. Why don't we go back, redraft these, and then look at them again? Yeah. yeah. So we don't... And Barbara, I'm going to have to clarify on that 50%, because if it's on the value and not the purchase right. price, it's two totally different numbers. Right. The value of the property is probably higher than the order. But value, the value of, the house. of the house. And that's probably even less than the purchase right. price. Could be. Right. But, but I think you ought to redraft these before we approve and just yeah. anything else people feel should be in their comments that we had discussed that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if she goes back and just looks at what yeah. we had to say, because I don't remember, but I had like, you know, 10 dot points that I <laughs> went over. So, what, and none so of we'll, them made it in there. So we'll not pass these. We'll wait. We'll table these. And, and hopefully they'll come back with a different version. That sound reasonable? Sure. Okay. All right, finance director's report. You're on, Joe. It's been basically very met a couple weeks ago. This is also right in line with what I provided to the board of selectmen last week. Um, not much has changed. Um, you know, fiscal 14 is still working out to about $600,000 favorable. $400,000 is still out there that can be allocated. I think Include the $200,000 for the property purchase that's been approved. Uh, we'll be closing on it on Friday, it looks like. Um, this week? Right. So, um, you guys have some transfers that are before you, one of which I'm sure will be a nice topic of conversation, will be the uh, Century Farm, which I was requested to do. Um, audit's going well. You, know, you guys had a very solid 14, but um, looking ahead to 15, I provided an update to the Board of Selectmen. You guys are right in line with, uh, with where you were last year. Uh, collection rates are right, you know, right on target. Obviously, the volume's a little bit higher because you had some growth in the grand list. Um, you know, what do I see as far as risks for this year? There's three things. One I'm not allowed to talk about because she's here. Uh, healthcare. You know, there's always some uncertainty with that. You guys are self-insured. You guys have storms. I gotta get that for some storms. We support that. No more storms. We know. No more storms. And then uh, state aid. Uh, you guys have obviously seen uh, some of the some of what's coming out from the governor's office. Um, deficit that they're forecasting it ranges from 80 million to 100 million for this fiscal year. There is a potential that um, that we could be harmed. Presently, the one grant that we have heard is uh, the municipal revenue sharing account. We have planned, I believe, 70,000 or 73,000 for this year. This was already cut in May after we passed the budget to 50,000, so there's an additional 50,000 dollars for the risk that's out there should they decide to cut that. Um, and a 50, 50, I think the total pool for that that entire grant is about 12 million dollars. So, are any other grants at risk, or just this one? That's the only one that we heard about. Um, that's one of the easier ones to cut because that, that was one of the ones that was put in right when uh, we raised the sales tax in Connecticut. So we really have nothing behind it. How, how are we doing on other revenue items in there too? You know, we have... So far, pretty good. You, you know, your building permits, they're doing okay. I mean, they're actually ahead of, ahead of where they were last year, but last year, all, most of your volume came in in the fourth quarter. Um, I'm mean, sorry, I'm talking fiscal year, not calendar year. So mm -hmm. the time frame of March or April to June. 
Um, so even with the decrease in this grant, we'll still come out okay? Yeah, from, from a materiality, materiality standpoint, $50,000 is a flip. Um, you guys will still collect you know, a million dollars north on your uh, tax collections, or $300,000, sorry. So this, this won't impact you too bad. Um, opportunities. I don't know if I, I, I probably told a couple of, couple of you this. We did an audit on our phone systems. Um, we identified about fifty thousand dollars in savings that you'll start to see next year. Um, most of that wasn't even in the reduction of phones. It was just getting us on on government contracted rates. Plus, we got a we got about. Mm, yeah. That was on the town side. Only. Town side board of ed is is going through this, a similar effort now. We wanted to see if there was anything out there. We had the town had actually done an audit about three years ago. So before we I'm going to use the term wasted this company's time, we just had them look at our side once before we had them look at the board of that. And uh, we were very surprised with the savings. It was great. And, that, and that, the only reason that we looked at this was uh, this is one of the line items for fiscal 14 that you were very that you were in favor. Um, you know, investment policy. This was more for the board of selectmen, but. Uh, to update you guys, I think when, when Stephen Sams from Morgan Stanley came out, he had told you we're right around two, two, uh, two percentage points for CDs. It's up to about 2.2 .2 on the five year. Um, I, I'm hoping to have a vendor chosen by December. I got to figure out exactly how, you know, how, how is this advertised? How do we interview? And how do we award? Because this is not something that actually costs us money. Um, but we should start investing in, in, the, uh, in the January time frame. Have you, have you determined how much money you're going to invest in certain ways? Have, yeah. have you done a schedule there? Um, you know, long term, probably eight million. Uh, short term, uh, you know, start off probably ten in, in a two month window. I'll show you how it's staggered. I'll, I'll have that for you guys in December or January before I do it. I'll actually look for you guys' as approval. I'll show you what our cash needs are by month. And to show you how it fits into the uh, under the profile, but you guys do have some cash that's out there. I, the part I need to identify is you can't invest bond proceeds, so I have to make sure that uh, no arbitrage, no bond arbitrage, please. Yeah, they, they tend to frown on that. Two quick question on the phones: What's the total line item of the phones? Not the board education, just the phone side. One second. You're talking about our outstanding bonding? No, no, no phones. telephones. Oh, he's back I'm to the sorry, phones. Phone expense. I think he's I'm looking sorry. for the phone bill. Bonds. It's probably a little more than your cell phone. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bills are getting back. Save it. The phones probably includes the internet service and all those. Right. With the, uh, or Yeah, why don't you get back to Jeff and just get the number so we can. Whether, I don't know what the last one for an RFP on that stuff. Um, I don't know that we ever have. I, I believe that they've basically been under government contracting with AT&T, although it, it turns out we weren't actually under the, uh, the state pricing. Yeah, I'll get back to it. It's not in, uh, it's not in the IT budget. Now, on the investment policy, if you, if you, do better. Right now, we've been budgeting twenty-five thousand. We'll see that later. But I assume we're talking about a lot bigger number on investment income. Yeah, fiscal fiscal fourteen, or fiscal fifteen, you'll be over a hundred. That would be the plan. Gotcha. And then fiscal fifteen, I would I would probably start planning on like two ten. Would we get any of that in the year we're in? The year? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. About hundred this year. Gotcha. Correct. So then it'd be what two hundred for the next year? Correct. 
Yeah, an audit should be done in the next four to six weeks. Bonding. Uh, on the audit, we're going to make the deadline? Or December 31st without question. Um, I don't think we're going to make November, November 30th. They probably pepper them with too many questions. Um, Have they finished the capital project? Three of our procedures that, that we engaged in for? I just got, got the document on it yesterday. Okay. Um, yes, there's questions. Okay. But they did, they did a decent job, actually. Okay. So you feel better about what you have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's the treatment of some of our expenditures changed over the last three years. So I basically brought it, had them bring everything back to 2010 and carry it forward. And basically, it's going to restate some of my capital funds, but it's going to give me a lot more comfort and the balances that are out there. You guys have a significant amount of favorability that's out there. And it's probably going up with half a million dollars. Before we do anything with that, I'd like to make sure that it's there. Thank you. So that's why they did it. And that's all I had on the bond. And on bonding, though, when, when are you planning on going to bond? Uh, January. So yeah. what will happen is once the audit's complete, we'll start putting together an operating statement. And then we go and meet with the rating agencies. Um, as this is my first time with the town, we probably will have to go to New York unless they will, unless they'll allow us surveillance. Uh, there's really nothing going on that, that should change your guys' rating. Um, I, I do expect you guys to return to AAA, um, especially with some of the policies you guys put in place. They like fund balance policies. They, they like the discipline on, on how you guys are borrowing, um, how you're looking at your collection rates, and how you're still returning the fund balance. So it should be a pretty easy thing. Burke, do we have anything from on the Board of Ed side for uh, the report? Well, just just in terms of uh, you know similar uh, review or savings opportunities, um, I think um, I don't think Joe mentioned we're, we're, uh, we had a conference call today, Joe and I and Tom and Tom Roy in uh, regard to the energy um, uh, utility invoice uh, audit and, and payment process. So we're moving forward with that. And um, in regard to the uh, telephone and, and data, I, I received the uh, auditor's first cut of, of, of questions on, uh, on our phone and uh, data. So we're uh, filling out those uh, uh, survey questions and returning them. We seem to be paying um, the correct rates for things, but there's some, some areas of potential savings. And we're going to hopefully hear that in about another uh, December 10th we should have. And actually, one thing I should touch on is uh, you guys have probably been following the DPUC and the CLMP's rates are going up. Uh, you guys don't have sensitivity to generation rates for two and a half years. Obviously, uh, transmission rates, you, if those go up, you do have susceptibility. So it's good. You guys are actually locked in for two and a half years. Really? Yeah. Alternative carrier. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Well, yeah, obviously. I'm going to say it. All right, so we want to move on to transfers. What do we have to do? This is our final shot at transfers, correct? Can I, yes. Before we get there, just ask one quick question. Joe, I know you've been working really hard on this audit. Yep. Um, but I also know that we're anxious to work on our long range planning and the. Agree wholeheartedly. Board. I've been He's asking me when we're going to meet. I've been fully forthcoming with Pete, so hopefully he's not the one that's, uh, that's asking that question. But um, yeah, I, I apologize. We'll, we'll, as soon as, oh, Just get, give me a sense of meeting. when, okay. De definitely before the next meeting. Okay, great. Good, thanks. I didn't mean to, I know you've been working hard. No, 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 it's, it's fair. I, I know my shortcomings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so transfers. Um, transfers, right. You have, these were all, all three, three were passed by the Board of Selectmen. They were broken up into three separate transfers, one being the capital non-reoccurring. These are actually old. Um, these are- so Walk us through, this is the memo of November 12th? Correct. So, so we go to that memo. memo. from Tom Cook saying that the Board of Selectmen has approved it. Then my request into the Board of Selectmen for the, to have these placed on the agenda. And then after that, so there's uh, there's the the capital non recurring budget transfer total is what forty three thousand correct oh forty three and these are the various categories and every so each so each fund is whole 
we're moving money within each fund. So it's fund 302, 303, 307. You're not moving money from any fund to another. This is just specifically the capital projects. Uh, these are these were on our audit last year. Some of these were on our audit last year. So um, basically, when you finish your audit, you're not supposed to have any accounts that are in a negative position. These, this is the remedy path. I'm going to put you on the spot here. I didn't ask you this. I should have. But let's say the mower, 35000 Yeah. When we do capital non recurring, we budget a certain dollar amount for a particular project. So this is saying we missed by 35000 Uh No, the expenditure came out of a uh, different line item. Um, so you had the machinery and equipment. So it just went, you went to the wrong category, so we're just kind of correcting kind of, it? Correct. Gotcha. Okay. So these are more like just correctional. They're not over true overspendings. They're yeah. just no, it's definitely not reclassification. Correct. Okay. And the, the amount of that was 35845 for the lower fund, but it looks like it was initially charged for 35454 that, that was the amount of favorability that was in that account. Oh, I see. So I, there was a three hundred ninety-one dollar overspend, uh, and that's what that line on right below right is. Below is. Okay. But this makes capital non recurring, so you feel comfortable with all the detail. Okay. Do we have to do these in one motion, or you want to do each one separate? The capital not recurring and the general fund, yeah, you can do in one. I mean, you guys need to talk about the century fund. I would imagine. What's the last one that's on the list there? It's th there's nothing under the project indication. The five eight seven five, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just be careful. And under general fund, that's just clean up. This is just year end clean up. And uh, unfortunately, some of these some of these line items we had I had moved money out when we did the transfers in, in early July, and the bills came in subsequently. There was also some um, like with the police department, there was some moving around, uh, re reclassifying some of the some of the time. Um, we, this is really just clean up. There's, there's no surprises in there. All right, so that's just general cleanup. Now, the, the last item is Simsbury Farms, and that's because it operated at 187. This is the deficit it operated at this June 30th, 14. So you feel good about that number? I and mean, we've already transferred all the prior deficits, so this is just cleaning this year up so when the audit comes out, it doesn't show a deficit. Right. But in reality, we missed by 187923 at making money. So that's why we're, when we talk about next year's budgeting, that's... The reason why. So this, you feel good about this number? I do, and I, and I, I got to say, there's actually some positives that we're seeing so far with Century Farms. The revenue was up; their expenditures were considerably down so far, year to date versus the prior year. So I, I don't yeah, think you're talking you're, about this the current correct. Year. So we're doing better the year we're in, but you, you are. Still I, mean, still I, I still think you're going to have a deficit, but I don't. It's, it's not going to be 187,000. It's not even going to be close. To is it 187 bucks? Is that 250? It was like 200. Um, um, I think it's 190, two, 190 or something. Was in the financial. This yeah. looks like a lower figure than I recall. No, it's, it's, it's pretty close to the number that we've, been, we've been looking at for some okay, time. I thought it was lower. I mean, my, my guess when we were yeah, talking in our subcommittee was that we were, you know, we were looking at a number around 190, so it's in this ballpark. but. But the question that I had was whether, you know, over time it was going to grow. And, and as Joe has just indicated, some of the actions that we've taken in the last few months have both been bo boosting the income and trying to look at the, you know, at the, um, the expenses and trying to close the gap. Um, but we recognize that the town is going to, or, you know, the Board of Selectmen's budget is going to, need to kick into this into the future and that's sort of the the philosophical issue that we've been sort of kicking around is you know how do we deal with that and what do we want it to be why don't we do this why don't we get a motion for the year-end closing entry so that would be the ones on uh capital non recurring and the general fund account transfers if i can have somebody make that motion so moved. Second. second second here nick made it any more questions on those two those transfers all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?
Motion carries. Second motion, Simsbury Farm transfers. Do I have a motion I'll for that? Move. Second. Oh, second. Discussion, any questions? All those in I would say I guess just the philosophical discussion is one that is ongoing in the board slept went in on the, the committee as well, Nick. Um, in terms of the appropriate level. Um, I mean if, if you look at Cincinnati Farms as a town service for our residents, much the way our library is, um, I guess you have the historical I've heard this probably from Joan many times well when it was Past, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. 72. 72. So 42 years ago, it was at that point promised to be break even, but we're 42 years later now, and um, that that promise or that commitment is something I guess they've been trying to stick to in the Board of Selectmen, but that just may not be. If we want to provide the service to our residents, it may not be feasible. Well, when we get into the budget discussions, we'll, we'll talk about the, yeah. the remedy yeah. there. Yeah, I agree with All right. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good. I'm sorry. Pete. You seconded that one? I did. I did. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you did the first one. No, she no. did the first one. I did the, I did the first one. The second one was Jeff and then second by Barbara. Right. Thank you. Fine. And I know mm -hmm. I ask this every year. And I know that you and I have had this conversation offline, but it's a shame we have to go to this level of detail, and it would be nice if we could just raise it a little bit. I know that we need to have our lines balance out, but we are we have an awful lot of detail in here, and it would be, I think, easier for you to do the work if you didn't have all these funds that need to go back and forth. So I know we've said it before, but... Well, it's funny, because the person that was had, the, had it the other way was Nick. You want more lines? I can tell you that Kevin Kane used to show you the pennies. Exactly. <laughs> it was it's down to the penny. Right. So, so Barbara, I can bring it at a summary level, but you still need the detail before you for broader purposes. We technically have line item, line item authority, so we have to. I'd like to beat you with that pencil. <laughs> well, the problem is you're not, spo you're not supposed to show the deficits for the audit. That's why Simsbury Farm shouldn't show a deficit, too. So. We're now should have a cleaner audit as a result of what we just did here. Hopefully. All right. Um, next, we talked about the last meeting. We had the, the uh, new capital non recurring budget savings fund. Um, you know, everyone. My recollection is we we said, well, let's set the fund up, but we don't have the exact rules yet, and I don't think we have the rules here tonight. Do you? You have not. Presented them, well, but I, was I mean, say I didn't get a new draft. No, no. <laughs> but in concept, I, I don't. We're not going to do any transfers. I don't think so. I think we're going to have to set this fund up. I think there's another way we'll probably fund it okay. once you get the capital squared away. Correct. Didn't we already vote to set it up last time? Well, we we firmly couldn't uh, vote, so we because uh, we had a special meeting and it wasn't called. So we we had our intent. Everyone said they would do it. Oh, okay. So one of these days we'll, we're going to vote to set it up. We're not going to set it up in the June 30th, 14 audit. Correct. It'll be set up in 15. So that immediate time pressure was not on us like it was. So we're if we were going to do a transfer and everything, we had to have done it by tonight. So oh, eventually we can, if we get the rules, we'll, we'll bring those forward. Our intent is to try to use this in the budget process to come up with a way to fund it and to have the rules so everyone can feel comfortable with them. Yeah, I think the sooner we do it, the so, better. I think the intent is everyone's in agreement. It's just yep. I don't want to do the thing unless we feel comfortable how we're going to operate. Yep. So I think it's important that we have rules and that, that we get the rules. I think we understand the framework, the concept, but we've got to get the particulars. So the devil's in the details, so we're going to get the, de the details. All right. Um, calendar. Everyone got a calendar. Now, we don't have to approve this tonight, but this is for everyone's awareness. We have to approve it by the next meeting, I believe. Now, I want you to note a couple of changes. Uh, down the bottom, I'm starting the meetings at 5.30, on, according to this. Ooh. Now, if we do the 5.30 start, uh, it, we couldn't get the room any longer back end, but it, we start it sooner, so it gives us more time. Is that a problem? Um, I didn't notice that either. So 
It's in small print on the bottom. <laughs> Everything's in small print. It's in small print, yeah. It wasn't in the original one. I know it's in this one. I think this is the one everyone got with the 530. Right. Yeah. So that's people right. should think about that. If that's a, <laughs> I know, a problem and, and with your schedules, then we will have to have it at 6 if it is. Or move. Five or move. 545 would be a little better for me. Uh, I mean, I, I will do my best for 530, but I may be late. Um, I, I miss the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Well, if we do 545, that gives us 15 more minutes. What do you think? That's it's an unusual time, but we'll, why not? Does that sound reasonable? The meeting that's after us can't be moved 15 minutes? Mm. We're already, already in the latest meeting. 7.30 is. You know, if we do it at 5.30 and you miss I mean, the I pledge and the minutes. I can send over comments to another board member on the minutes. If I miss the mm -hmm. minutes and the pledge, I'll do the pledge on my way here. Well, well, let's think about <laughs> it right now. We'll just Now, one thing we have to look at is the dates. I'll stand at a stop line. Now, these make the charter because we have certain charter requirements. So, Mary, your office is happy with this. Is, is town clerk happy? Yeah, the 31st is the last date. Um, the board selection can make the presentation. Yeah. So that's the only concern. There's a. You can call. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Can it be like a finals game for you, Con? They either play Monday yeah. or Tuesday. We can call a special yeah. meeting if we have to before. Yeah, that's why right. I wanted it to be oh. Wednesday. Because everybody knows that's the, that's the outside window now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thursday meeting. Right. right. That, that's the absolute date. Right. Now, as far as public hearings, we're going to have a public hearing April 9th. We, we have dates for two, but we're going to formally have one, and then we'll have public audience at ours unless something so controversial has come up, we'll have another public hearing. So this is where I ran into a little bit of trouble last year when I changed some of the dates. I guess I we shouldn't have done that, or I, I don't know. I was... If you push this in any direction, I, I, we caused some problems, so we we had to get things right and approved, and so we could have the referendum date as May fifth. Is that everyone signed off on that? Yeah, you, want, you guys typically do it the first Tuesday in May. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we I always set aside all the Tuesdays, but Thursdays are already all consumed for me for every year for the last 20 so <laughs> so <laughs> all of a sudden these Thursday meetings threw me for a curve because I'm I, I already have meetings on Thursdays so that's going to be a problem for me at least so why did we switch the Thursdays on these was there the ninth was well, March 12th for the Board of Ed budget uh, presentation similar to what you did last year happens to be the same night as the regular Board of Ed meeting so it was out of, out of request of ours to have an alternate date so that they didn't conflict. Last year I think it was either a Wednesday or Thursday. So March 12th is the same date? Thursday the 12th, which is shown here, this, this proposed schedule, is a date that would allow for Board of Ed to come to a meeting of yours rather than have a conflict the same the same evening. Because it's a regularly scheduled every second and fourth. Um, well, if Linda can't make Thursdays, let's say we switch it to a Wednesday. Is that a problem? Um, I think I think that that could work. I, I know we, uh, Is that that reasonable if we do it on Wednesday? Uh, some Wednesdays that don't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. You know, well, let's you let's, let's look and here. see if we can do the Wednesday and try to try to do that. Now, how about the ninth, April 9th? Is there magic to that date? No, I think it just fit into. So if we put that to the to yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday the eighth or Tuesday. No, oh, the final four. We mean the <laughs> final four. Is that where? Come on, we're. we're uh, the team's not in this year. They're not yeah, gonna win. They huh? lost one game. Give them a break. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, I'm honestly you can't fly back until games Tuesday night. Soonest you can even fly back and get a flight is Wednesday. So I'm not making a Wednesday night, but I can make what's scheduled here that Thursday. But you can't. But, yeah. Can we do it the following week, or does it have to be that week? No, that way not do it the following. It has to be that week. Well, let me Let's look see at if I can change something. But I, mean, I think what gave, what or gave skip us flexibility it. is if you wanted to have... You know, I mean, somebody... We went to, 
people, people miss meetings. That's it. They just miss it. If you want to push it up to April, that gave us a whole lot more flexibility. Push what up to April? The actual Re referendum? The referendum. This is the latest that you can push the meeting so that the referendum is held in there. That's what we work backwards so that. Yeah. Well, the real question is, how soon can we have the budgets? Because then you can move it way forward. Yeah, a long session this year, so yeah. if you move it up too soon, you're not going to get the accurate data. That's, I mean, we can move it up. We always submit ours early, but then what, you won't know what the legislature does. When's the governor does, do, does his presentation there? Is it February? Yeah, it's late this year because this is the long session, so the session starts January 7th. And then the, um, What's the closed date of session? So, Last June. June. Usually we go off the governor's so budget. We, so we still won't know. We may know. But the deadlines. You won't know for sure. Right. But you, you, there are your folks' deadlines for things that's that normal. Exactly. But, but, but at least you have a. I mean, why, why don't we put in where our conflicts are, see what we can work out, and we'll. Now, as far as the Thursday, if we move April 9th, and I assume April 16th, we'll have to move that too, right? Those go in lockstep. Or, or, or we just them? miss April 9th. I mean, that's, that's okay. Well, Why don't we go back and check the dates to the yeah. charter? Because it's really the charter. That yeah, charter. It's not yeah. our calendar. Right. So we'll go back and check it, and then we'll try to revise it where we can and give you some options. And if okay. we can, then we'll just That's unreasonable. Lock it in. Now, one other request, uh, public audience. Uh, we traditionally had public audience at the pre-budget process, and that's what we had tonight. Um, some of my thoughts are to have public audience a little more often. I don't know if we want to publish that here or just as just call it when we call it. Sometimes there's special things we have to I, or think we need to do it uh, more, or do you want to put it in here or, or just leave it like this? And then if I call public audience, just let it be a, a call. Yeah, let it be a call. Does that that sound reasonable? Yeah. I mean, you know. Okay. I, I would I would ask that we try and do it once a quarter if we can work it in. Okay. But to me, whether it's lockstep into the first or second or third month of the quarter doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that into consideration. Yeah. We'll try to call it once a quarter and uh, so we can hear from the public. And obviously we have the, the scheduled ones where we... And I think we have to be sensitive to, you know, at many of our meetings we're already running into the next meeting. Right. And if we've yeah. got real, you know, <laughs> things that may need to be decided we got to do that as a priority so okay all right well we'll get back on these dates and get get these out to people so we can start looking for conflicts and try to get this so we'll have to approve it in December to get it posted otherwise we have to call all special meetings <laughs> we don't want to do that right okay all righty um, okay we're into the next budget cycle so we have a little presentation Joe has prepared and basically what we're trying to do here is just uh, I think everyone's got a, a copy of, of it and it's just kind of warm us up to coming into the budget cycle and just start thinking about what we have to think about and uh, some of the areas look at our goals talk about you know a little bit about our financial indicators um, estimates and items that impact the budget you know we've done some changing last year but just kind of warm us up to some decision process and and what has to happen and you kind of talk about AAA rated how we do uh, then I had them put a, the worksheet in from last year and um, uh, trying to give you like a five-year trend I think we did we get in here on revenues and expenses so you can get the feel for what's been happening I don't know if we kind of got everything I wanted in here in here but we're, we're trying to get you a little more information so it's in one spot so why don't you go through it, Joe, so we can kind of... So put together a quick, quick agenda, just talking, talking through what, what we wanted to go over, budget goals, financial indicators, what impacts the budget. Uh, did, did some slight comparisons against other towns, and I, I know that'll probably uh, hit us with more questions. Uh, some information, uh, you know, for five years budget items to consider and then a thought on the budget process. Oh, sorry guys, this is going line by line. So these are your goals from last year. Lower the flat mill rate, maintain your AAA rating, debt service under 7%, ensure Simsbury Farms fiscally stable, long-term fiscal <coughs> discipline, 
And here's some of your financial indicators. All right, so Social Security benefits are rising 1.7%. This is called your CPIW, uh, Consumer Price Index. Well, that's known. That came out right from this Social Security. This is published. So, so can I just, you go going really fast. For budget goals, those were last year's budget goals. Right. Are we going to be able to think about maybe expanding it? Because I can think of a new goal I'd love to see on that for this year's process. But we're just kind of doing an update on what we did last just year. Just an update, now. right? Just okay. to get our minds starting into the process. And okay. none, that, this is not a this is just it's guidelines. So it's just to start stimulating conversation and, and to get our thought process going again on what we want to do. Because it's a long process. Yeah, theoretically, Barb, what we ought to be doing is giving some guidelines and some direction to the two boards. And right. So yeah. that's sort of where we're and one of the things, to one of the things we're going to do is try to call a three-board meeting to just sit down and talk about drivers of the budget and, and where everyone's thinking about, it. so people can start the process early and not have any surprises and know where we're coming from. So when they formulate their budget, uh, you know, before everyone gets a hard position, we just start talking about what we're thinking about. So I think we're going to try to do that this year. So let's kind of go through this and then we'll. So, state of Connecticut unemployment's down to 6.4 percent. Nationals 5.9. We don't have Simsbury. Um, Simsbury lags. So, the last last information I have on Simsbury is July of 2013. At that point in time, the uh, state of Connecticut was 7.4. You guys were 5.4. Put you guys right a little bit under that. Probably you guys are right around 5.2, 5. .2, 5 .0. Um, you guys have always outperformed the, the, the state as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, AAA borrowing still near 2 percent. Uh, you know, we're hoping that it holds. Obviously, the Fed has stopped their uh, qualitative easing. You know, there's not, there hasn't been a flight to equity yet, so we're hoping that the rates kind of hold. Now, 173 housing permits uh, since January 2014. The reason I threw that in here is this is far and above outpacing every every town in the Har Greater Hartford area. Um, these aren't like doing kitchens over or slight remodelings. These are like these are housing starts. It comes. From, this is from the. Uh, That'd be housing or, or apartments, though. Correct. I mean, keep in mind we've got a project going up at Dorset Crossing. And there's one. Oh, that's, more, that's the majority there. of it. Car Carson Way is starting up now. They've got six buildings up, I think, at this point. Ensign Bickford's starting in on the project down at the bottom of Potter Forest Drive. Um, and so I mean, you know, that's going to be there's going to be multi-use um, housing and, and medical facilities and so forth. There's a whole bunch of different stuff going on. So I mean, Mary, Mary's comment that was out on was it Patch today or yesterday? Um, I think you know, speaking of, of the economic development that's going on in the in the, in the town is is um, really quite a change from what we've seen, you know, over the. In just a couple of years, so. I agree. I mean, it seems like uh, capital's flowing a little bit more through the marketplace than it has in the last five. Um, I, I do expect to see a grand list grow. Joe, when when do we get the grand list? I mean, that's always. An issue. It's like an eighteen month lag. You put up a building, you start seeing. No, but I mean, when when does he come out with the actual brand list that we we're gonna tax uh, off of? Is it January thirtieth? It's January. We start pushing him in January. I mean, he can technically come up with a January one, but he always gets a one month extension yeah. and comes up with a February one, right? Uh, it's, uh, I think every town does that, unfortunately. But is there any way to get an early indicator or anything for us? Joe, so this thing's like the Queen Mary. You throw the wheel over, it doesn't start changing direction real fast. I mean, it's <laughs> the trend line is, is there. He needs to be, be able to tell us what that trend line is. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll push them. But from what I've seen, it. But I mean, with, with the budgets are coming in. I mean, obviously, we're we need that because when we set the bill rate. But the other boards don't need that information. I mean, it makes our job maybe easier if we have significant grandless growth. But I don't think our intent is is to just give it away. And, and can I just interject? I, you know, I still think we all need to keep in mind the, the future impact of the Hartford potentially being raised, which I think is probably inevitable. I just don't know when, um, unless we're super lucky. And so while we've got great grandless growth, I don't want us to spend right up to that grandless growth because right. then when that million dollars of revenue disappears, we're going to have this big crisis. So if, if we've got that nice 
growth, then let's you know use it as a cushion to offset. The I think we have about three years to get ready, and we're gonna we should probably entertain doing some kind of designation of fund balance where we either uh, plan on putting a few hundred thousand each year aside yeah. just in case. You know, when we get the long range planning, we, we can smooth it out in the next few months. We can kind of get more of a yeah. plan, but. Uh, my magic number is about a million two. I think we need to have ready just in case we need it. Right, I think that's something we need to keep in mind in terms of goals. Yeah, I think from a budget goal perspective, I mean, you know, we could kind of take note and, and to Barb's point, update these. That would be one that I yeah. and, and I like the idea of having five. I mean, I, I hate to see us having an overwhelming number. But it would be nice to be able to really focus our attention, and I like adding that in there. And maybe we can. Seems very far was fiscally stable, but I think that's was an important initiative last mm -hmm. year. That's going to be ongoing, but I think I would plant that with mm -hmm. a contingency plan for the loss of a major taxpayer uh, revenue. Of, mm -hmm. You know. Well, so I, I think that maybe the long-term planning is what I was thinking was kind of missing from it. And the yeah. conversations that I hear from the public, and, and I know when we do have public audience, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, where are we getting money from? And it feels like there's this there's boxes of all this money and we can just like open it up and find it and that's really not the case there's funds well it's really I know, not I know. There, there's specific funds and I think it's more transparency in the process to understand at budget time what are the other funds that we're going to be looking at and thinking about doing something with in the next 12 months and because we don't necessarily put everything in operating so I think it's more transparency and long-term planning hopefully we'll get at a little of that well, you see later on, we'll get to a slide where we're, we're going to talk about okay. something we can use this budget cycle. Joe, why don't you? Okay. Um, so estimates that impact the, the budget process. Collection rate assumptions. You guys have gone from 98 to 98.5 last year. Still conservative. You guys collect 99.5, but the, you know, 98.5 gives you that sensitivity should we have another decrease or another economic uh, event like we had in 2007, 2008. Um, capital non-recurring, so you, know, you have the approval of the projects as well as the payback schedules, give you some flexibility. Debt service levels and rates, you know, do you guys want to maintain 7%? Do you want to see that slowly go down? Do you want to see it go up? You know, rates, your bonding capacity is significantly different at 4% than it is at 2%. Um, pension and OPEB rate, rate of returns, you know, that from both a planning perspective and an actual perspective. Fortunately, you guys have actually been outperforming your, uh, your numbers that you, that you planned on. Um, so we use 7% of the pension. I know our investment advisors, we asked that question, Nick and I, at our meeting last week, and they feel comfortable with that number, but I assume our actuary will feel comfortable with seven, you'll give us the, mm -hmm. because we changed that, I mean, two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago, we changed that down from seven and three quarters to seven. And that put a little shock in the budget, so, uh, <coughs> you know, but that's, that's, that changes the budget, how you do that. We're seven and a half percent on OPEP. Yeah, it changes, so, changes your arc. Yeah. Um, overhead allocations, you know, you, where, where's your money going? Right? How much of it is going into cemetery farms or other areas? Um, use of internal service funds favorability. Well, back over at Allegheny, we were talking about Simsbury Farms and the allocation back to the board of select, and that's where, you know, that allocation we're, we're proposing there goes back into their budget, so that, that relates to that. Um, so use of internal service funds favorability. So you guys have your internal service funds, which is typically paid to make to, to pay for your medical claims. Uh, at the end of fiscal 13, you had a balance of 5.6 million. So that's one of the higher favorability funds I've ever seen. But um, in that fund, you typically want to keep a reserve, and the municipality gets to determine what that reserve rate is. Um, the number that goes through my head is right around two, two and a half, three million dollars, right in that range. You really want to look at 20 to 30 percent of one year worth of claims. Anything over that, you could consider yourself potentially over reserved. Um, you do have a way of actually bleeding that into your operating budget if you wanted to. You could use it, you know, and I, I wouldn't recommend uh, an all at once type of thing, but you could subsidize some of your uh, some of your health care rates for the next foreseeable future, five, six, ten years. 
I think if we come up with like a policy, if we if once they determine what it is, I think our, our advisor recommended how to calculate that. I, I think it's about the, the number you're talking about. And so let's say you have 2.8 million or 3 million left over. If, if we want to feather it into the budget, you take 10% of whatever that excess amount is every year, and usually you won't get budget shocks. So then that could be $290,000, a benefit. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, that's a good use of reserves and not, because you could lose a million dollars in a year and that was a bad experience. So that's why you don't want to be crazy. You need that reserve for a reason. But I don't think we'll be irresponsible by using a piece of it. So we have, you know, so we got those opportunities, I think. So I like that opportunity. Hi. First, um, Bert, when, when we meet next week with the insurance committee, is this a topic that we'll talk about? Um, just general favorability. Um, how are we doing? You know, what are the, what is the current months of months of claims? Um, this committee will be covering. Um, Bob has tried to give us an annual indication of what you know what he believes the, the proper amount of funding should be. Is there a plus? And then this kind of feeds into the amount of reserves. You guys just set up a fund balance policy. Um, that it looks like you guys are moving right at 12%. Um, that's definitely the top end of the uh, Numbers. This is where you talk about the Hartford need and you know how, how that will come into that discussion. All right, so how does Simsbury compare? I know there's going to be a thousand questions on this. I compared you guys against every tri AAA municipality in the state. I only looked at means and median, or average and median. So, grand list, you guys. Can are you tell us just roughly like which? You know, we don't want to name yeah. them all, but are they sort of the Greenwiches of Connecticut? I will give you the list right now. I'm not sure it's Yeah, I'm doing it right now. This is actually from 2012. So the, yeah, I'm going to try and zoom in on the towns. This is what the towns look on. Avon, Darien, Easton, Fairfield, Farmington, Glastonbury, Greenwich, Madison, New Canaan, Norwalk, Ridgefield, Simsbury, Wallingford, West Hartford, Weston, Wilton, and Woodbridge. So it kind of covers the whole state. It's New Haven, Fairfield County, uh, Middlesex, a little bit. Avon, Farmington, West Hartford, is that the only? Glastonbury, West Hartford, thanks. And then I, mean, I do have another one that kind of feeds off the same information. We can put whatever towns we want in here. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I did AAA here, but you know, if you have any other towns that you want to list that I can pull the majority of the information. Um, is AAA? No. no. I, don't I don't know why it's on this list. This yeah. <laughs> because, I was, because I was asked to by them. Yeah, yeah, no, time. these are different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did tailor something to you guys. I'm gonna send it to you guys after this meeting. Um, I didn't want you guys to have it before. So you guys can play around with it and see see if there's anything that you like. Okay. Um, so we said grand list, you know, you guys are less than median and average, and they're a relatively small town. Um, I mean population wise you're, you're somewhat big, but um, commercial is just not, not there as much. Um, population, you guys are less than median and average. Education spend per student. You guys were less than the median and average. Fund balance, um, you know, right in the middle. Uh, where you guys really set yourself apart was uh, on the total bonded debt per capita. You guys are well under the median and capital. I'm sorry, median and average. Um, so part of part of it is the reason that you guys are are in the same range as everyone else with that service payment level is uh, you guys have a rapid amortization schedule. You guys only bond for 10 years. Um, 
that is a tool that's out there if you guys ever wanted to extend it, but you guys are pretty well disciplined and uh, seems to work for you. And the high school goes off when? 2018? Right. Or 17. 17. Um, you know what? You can probably see it on that other schedule, that college schedule I gave you. But I mean, we've got a couple more years before that big chunk yeah. drops off. Correct. Yeah, it drops off uh, 819. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, about a million nine decrease, right? Yeah, the million, between 18 and uh, 19, it goes from 3.5 down to a million five, so there's about a $2 million decrease there. That's, a, that's the opportunity to get your debt the way you want it for the future. Okay. So, Pete, you wanted this in here. This is the mill rate worksheet that you guys approved last year. Um, and I, I think what you were trying to show was just the year-on-year -year changes. Yeah, it just shows we had a 1.04 total expense yeah. change. You know, Board of Selectmen, where theirs was, debt retirement was down. Board of Ed, where theirs was, was right around the 105. Um, then our, our revenues, so yeah, overall, yeah. It, Showed a tax decrease from what 39.29 to 37.14. The millage. So we had a grand list growth of what did we project? What question we had? What point? Point nine. Point nine. So that just kind of, you know, ultimately we're going to be looking at that sheet a lot. So <laughs> start looking at it. Well, the point nine on the grand list growth. We, we, I think we only recognized that really towards the end of the process that, right. that it was going to be that high. Yeah. Because we, we were originally, I think, looking at what, 0.5 or? A lot less, less, I think. Yeah, yeah. there's two numbers that were out there because they were based on different things. Yeah. So the, the original number that you guys had was like 0 0.62, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And that was the change between October and December, and then uh, when you compared it against the baseline, which was the previous year, which was, you know, that was 0.9. Point nine. What I told Joe to do a bunch of five-year schedules for us. You know, when we did our presentation, we had seven years. If you could pull out the last one we did in April, or you pull this, it just kind of just gives you a flavor for, I'm a trend guy, so you, you can see trends on where we've been going, where, what budgets are doing what, so it just, just gives you a feel, so to speak. And uh, the reason that you see the, such an uptick in the charges of uh, charges for goods and services, sale of the, the property as well. Also, you notice interest used to be 142,000 way back when. It went down to 25. At one time, it was a million. It was a million dollars at one point. Yeah. The, uh, the 480,000 for Farrell's farm. 2.409. Just in case you can see the trend. Oh, that's it. Yes, you have the actual, not the not the budget. Either. Correct. So yeah, I can actually, the actual revenue. I can actually walk you down from okay. the two four zero nine to that, and then the uh, the, set, the uh, additional fees for the building permits. And a schedule like this, it's almost worth giving that its own line sale of property because it's just it's. Excuse. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Then, then I have to shrink the font and I get yelled at by Peter. <laughs> Make more boxes. Just add one line. I don't want to shrink it too much. Um, expenditures, this is uh, basically took, took the budget um, and then added in the transfers just so that you didn't see any, any funny spikes in the, uh, in the expenditures. <laughs> Otherwise, it just kind of looks funny. I would need more lines. Taxes to be collected uh, on the revenue slide mm -hmm. for budget 2015. Um, that's derived directly from our current. So the, yeah, the, the 83 million is 98.5 percent collection rate. And so the reason that you actually see it going down is the, the actual collection rate of 99.5 versus 98.5. And then obviously there's some growth of the grand list. So there's a little bit of ball rate mix. So did they the use our actuals? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Boy, that's exactly what's in the audit. Um, expenditures, you know, fiscal 14 still the, the put the budget in. Uh, can't pull it out of the system yet until all the uh, auditor entries are in. I want to make sure it looks clean. But this is basically what you guys should see. CNR. Um, I included a couple of items in here that you normally don't talk about, such as low SIP. You see the big jump in 2013. But this is how the CNR has been for the past five years. Definitely been growing. The, the key thing is we have to give direction to the town and the Board of Ed what they get. And I think 416 was the, the town one that we give out of CNR, and a 570 is the Board of Ed. So we tell them the allocation out of the fund, what they can spend up to, and then they reimburse. That's in the, the current CNR. If we set up a new CNR fund, that's different, and there'll be a, a separate fund. You know, we were shooting for a million dollars, which is what basically what that... Right. Yeah, it's they, in that they got the low set, Yeah, you take low set out of there. That's oh. Right. Simsbury Farms, special font. So to touch on what Jeff was saying before, so the highest that you guys have had for a general fund deficit is right around 200000 However, the cumulative deficit was 235000 That's That's where you were thinking of that number. Yeah. Um, so I broke up the revenue and expenditures, and I, I apologize. I know there's a ton of information on this. But you did see slight uptick in, uh, in golf course fees this year, which was definitely a good sign. Um, your, skating, your, your skating's actually been one of your, your better performers. That, that seems to be a definitive break even. Um, just got to figure out a way to start cutting costs. All right. Bonding. So assumptions that you're going to use 10-year notes and that your rate's going to be about 2.15. Um, so capacity. If if we were to hold the budget exactly where it was today, you guys would be able to borrow another 8, 8055. That would get you right at 7%. I'm expecting to be right around $5 million. Uh, there's also a potential of refunding some of the older bonds. It's not considerable savings. It's probably forty to fifty thousand. But if you're already going through the process of issuing bonds, it makes sense to, uh, to do it. Um, I provided some worksheets for you guys. I'm so, I'm sorry. Are you suggesting that instead of doing the five million dollar issuance that you're talking about here, if we did six, we could go and pay off some of the others? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, refundings are yeah. Re refundings are slightly different. I mean, you're not actually issuing new money, you're just refunding whatever. But can you do that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We did it once before. We saved about 300000 Well, we did it as a separate action, though. I mean, we didn't do it when we went out to out to bond, doing a $5 million new bonding. We we went and actually found a bond that we wanted to... Right. to uh, well, the high school bonds. Right. Yeah. So this would right. give the idea is to get a lower rate. Correct. Right. Just yeah. like refinancing oh, yeah. your house. Yeah. 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 Um, so bonds. But most well, of our rates were already pretty low, though. The older ones. Some of the older ones. The older ones. So, so if it's something, something's five or six yeah. years old, the rates are much no, higher. No, we did some were yeah. callable, yeah. But, but yeah. Linda, okay. Linda, the problem is that some of the older ones don't have much more time to go until they mature anyway. Okay. So. Correct. So and there is a class you for lawyers. Costs. And, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that's why it only makes sense to do it if you're wrapping it in with a new issuance. Otherwise, the cost of issuance isn't worth it. I mean, keep in mind, these things don't work the way your mortgage does. They take that $5 million bond, divide it up into 10 tranches of 500000 each, right. and, you know, they, they spread them out across the 10 years. So, you know, if we're eight years into one of these bonds, there's only a, you know, a million or a million five or so left out there. The one thing Joe's going to have to give out is a capacity schedule. I don't know if you... We didn't prepare that yet. I don't think we prepared that for tonight. You know, we have to look at the, yeah. you know, look based on the debt schedule, what the capacity is and what we can. I was going to say 40, 50,000, but I like that idea. Now, on the other side, we got to get the two boards to start talking about or, or thinking about how much they, they, they want to request in capital expenditures. Right. Uh, well, when we have that meeting, we'll talk about that. Well, that's supposed to be in our capital plan, but it always seems to get yeah. augmented. 
you weren't supposed to put on anyway. All right, so I did provide you guys with the schedule. I broke it up with the existing payments on the left-hand side, and then two scenarios, one being a new issuance of five million and a new issuance of, of the eight million. And I gave you guys what your new, what your new payments would look like. Um, Existing payments budget are six million one sixty six eight one nine. So if we only do five million, you're going to service six million twenty seven. So it'll actually decrease. So you see a decrease service. of one hundred thirty eight thousand. Yeah. Versus if you do the full eight million, you're going to see an increase of two hundred two hundred two thousand. Um, I mean, there's always ways that I can sensitize it, but right now this just assumes no deferral of interest or no deferral of pain of uh, principal. I apologize. State statute allows me two years of no principal payments, but it's kind of a bad discipline to get into. Um, so, and then over on the right, which you guys do not have, I provided you two other scenarios, one being a flat budget and the percentage of your debt service as it relates to your budget. Um, you know, with the five million, you never come close to seven million or seven percent. If you'll send that out to us so we can see that. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. That's not this. That's not in here. see it. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't have it. Well, it's, you're just missing the last four columns. Yeah, you're missing these, these ones right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. are the only and ones I could assuming see. Assuming a one and a half percent increase of the budget, which that's not my place to make that assumption, um, you'll, you'll never touch the uh, 7%. I mean, with these two bond documents. All right, Joe, why don't you go to the next slide? Yeah. All right, budget items to consider. Cemetery Farms. Um, you know, we, the recommendation from the, the committee that met was to have the Board of Selectmen fund about 90000 in Cemetery Farms and asking Cemetery Farms to increase revenue by 50000 and decrease expenditures by 50000 just sizing the elephant, as you saw from the transfer that you approved earlier, we had about $190,000 problem. It doesn't appear like it's going to be that full amount for fiscal 15, but it's still what, what, what they were tasked with. Um, collection rate, it's still at the 98.5. I recommend keeping it. Rating agencies don't like to see a lot of fluctuations unless you're getting more conservative. Um, you know, so you can really only do that kind of increase oh, yeah. once every few years. Um, you know, you need to start thinking of areas of savings. We've looked at the phones, we're going to look, keep looking at other items. Uh, Pete, you wanted to bring up the un unexpended education fund. Um, put the statute number in there in case. Yeah, if we set up. that up, our board has to set that up. If we, now what that does is allow the board of ed any balance left over in their appropriations. So let's say if we set that up during this year at the end of 6:30, 15. Instead of turning back twenty-five thousand, they would keep it in this fund, and then they could use it to offset future budget. Why would you only do that on the education side? Because that's all the statute all allows the statute you to do. Allows. It's only set up for education that that statute. And I will tell you, I did it. We did do this in West Haven. It was very successful. Um, you know, each year they were able to put aside about two hundred thousand dollars and just rolled into the next year, and it paid for the for the incidentals, so the items that are typically you know. Something like smart boards in the classrooms, items like that. Um, but it did it did work for us. I mean, our, my board of education went from spending or overspending by a million a year to all of a sudden they're favorable. Um, so it encourages it encourages during the budget cycle additional right. efficiency measures and savings because that yeah. added incentive. Get to keep like, it. Right. The, the, the one but only for a year, right? Your board of ed is yeah. pretty good here. It's, uh, Definitely. Just pretty good? Well, very good. It's just, it's very different than what I had in West Haven, so I think they're already very fiscally conservative, but the, the policy itself doesn't matter, the fund itself. But it can't happen unless we set it up, so we just, we don't have to do it for a while, but we got to think about it, so keep bringing it up. Only a few towns have it because it's relatively new. Um, you know, changing the interest income policy, obviously interest income, you're not making a, a tremendous amount right now, but we do have money that goes to, say, the sewer fund or, or other funds that are out there. It might be nice to have a policy that just says sweep all that interest income back to the general fund. You know, should we ever hit the 80s again and have 14% of funds? 
Can we do that? I the, hope uh, not. I'll, I'll take use? five. Can, can we do that with sewer use? I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. One of our charters. Is it charter? Well, it's just a, no, no, no. It's just it's a separate. Yeah. And then the uh, last page was the budget timetable. Obviously, this is what we're going to be talking about. We have already have this before you. Now, one thing we're going to try to do is have a three board meeting. Hopefully in the first two weeks of December to get the three boards together. So everyone look at their calendar. So we're going to start put in with Joe. We're going to send out a, a, an email saying with some dates, probably two dates from the first week of December and three or four from the second week of December. We'll find out what's good for everyone if we can call a three board meeting just to, as we start the budget process just to get everyone's thoughts and where we are to, to get the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen and some of our thoughts and just you know and they're not it's just us getting together so we all get on the same page early and if we have some areas we can bring it up things to talk about so I think it will be good and um, in advance that meeting even if we were using last year's as the projected yeah yeah yeah, in capital, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully they'll have that. Discuss that all. Yeah. It's good. I've got a sick kid. Got a sick kid. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to end the meeting uh, oh. right now. So uh, just so we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Also, the rules. I I think we've handed them out, but we don't have time to pass them tonight. We'll pass them next. If anyone has any questions? Email me. No, we didn't. Yeah, we just keep. Take a look, really seriously look, because I want to try to approve them. Hopefully at the next meeting in, the, in December when we have a formal meeting so everyone's happy, then we can approve them. But I just want to, I don't want to rush through them. I want everyone to feel comfortable. Um, do we have 30 seconds for one comment on them? Uh, why don't you just put it in, because the Did other uh, board more. needs to meet, so. To, oh. Can you send over the changes? I can yeah. send them Yeah, just, yeah. I'll, I'll call you. Okay, uh, no other business. I'll motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Any second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.